Hey everyone. G'day, g'day. Welcome to another Health Made Simple show episode. Give us a minute here. I'm just going to set us up on Facebook and then we can uh, get started. So come in, get comfortable, say hi in the chat, and then we will uh, we'll get going. Hey, Eric and Lisa, good to see ya. Okay, we're getting we're getting set up. Dr. Bart. Good day, good day. Good evening. How are you? I'm doing great, thank you. We're just getting set up here and then we're going to we're going to dive into some healthy foods that aren't really healthy. Yeah, that's the idea. And a great topic and this is um what's neat about this one. It's literally you know, these are these are real things we get every day. In clinic, I have these questions all the time where people be like, I don't know, I'll say, you know, how'd you do nutrition this week? And they'd be like, fantastic. I went to blank, you know, and you never want to make anyone wrong. Uh, but that's, that's why we're doing this. So this is, this will be an eye opener, I think, for a lot of people and help us to navigate this road of, you know, continuously helping our helping, you know, each one of us just level up a little bit. It's, it's these little tips, if you want to call it. That'll help us continue to just like make little better strategies, little little better choices along the way here. Yes, exactly. Love it. All right, looks like we're live. So, should we dive in? Yeah, let's dive in. And All right. Well, sorry. I was just gonna say a quick reminder for everyone, especially on a show like tonight. If you have questions, like this would be, uh, you know, you get questions about certain food groups or certain things that you, you know, I just have questions about because we're going to cover a whole bunch of topics, different proteins, different power bars, all kinds of different things that people think are super healthy. And if you've got something, you're not wondering, make sure you just you throw it in the comments here. So whether it be in the chat section or if you're live on Facebook, you can do that as well. Yeah, definitely. All these foods, any foods you've wondered about, but you're not sure. Now's the night to ask it. So welcome back everybody to another episode of the Health Made Simple show. Uh, to kick us off, I want to introduce our host, Dr. Bart Precourt, who has been a healthcare provider for over 20 years, practicing a range of modalities, including chiropractic, acupuncture, kinesiology, nutrition uh, and supplementation and functional testing at his clinic, Balance Health Studio in Seagrove Beach, Florida. He's also the founder of the Health Edge program, which is a virtual health program for executives and entrepreneurs wanting to take their health to the next level. So he also works with celebrities and athletes all around the world. Uh, and tonight is going to share his thoughts. I've written a big list of foods so far. So he's going to share his thoughts on some of these common foods that people might think are okay for us. We're going to get we're going to get your opinion tonight. No, I'm familiar with. I, yeah, I have one of those two. So Karen, before we even get going here tonight, so inevitably, you know, I'll probably be naming brands and companies and stuff like that. And it's one of the parts that I don't like about this. Um, I never want to pick on a brand. I never want to pick on a company unless they're just evil. But um, that's not always a scenario. My, my thought is that they're always 
well intended and they're doing the best that they can. So please know that I'm not picking on anything. I do this just solely just so because they're everyday decisions that we have. And sometimes our thought processes and sometimes the way we go about choosing these foods is because of marketing and or just hearsay that's get passed along. So that's why I do it. And there's a lot of this. I like I never like using brands, but inevitably I'm going to today. So um, again, it's kind of like my, my disclaimer that I'm not trying to pick on anybody here. Yeah, I mean, sometimes we recognize these these actual foods by by different brands, right? So it gets tough to to separate it. But um, but yeah, I think there's I think there's going to be some good info. So uh, should we dive into the first one? Let's dig in. What do you got? Okay, so this I, I, I don't know about in the US. I'm assuming so, but here these are getting so much more popular in Australia. And that's the uh, the Beyond Burger. Well, we have Beyond Burger. You have Beyond Burger and Impossible Burger. Uh, tell us about tell us about these because they're getting a lot of good press about um, reducing environmental impact of eating meat. Mm-hmm. What do we think of these from a health perspective? So oh, let's let's break this down in many different levels. There's an Impossible Burger and there's a Beyond Burger. And they're almost identical. They just use a little bit of different protein source, those two things there. So, but let, let's, let's, let's just take it for, let's start with always square one. So everyone that's listening tonight on Facebook and here at Zoom, again, uh, thanks for joining us and congratulations for, you know, committing to yourself and leveling up your own health by just getting more and more educated. That's the whole idea here. So again, if you have questions, please just throw them into the chat or throw them, you can go live on Facebook with them as well. So the very first place we're going to start all the time, and this is what I'm, I'm going to roll through every single time tonight. First, let's just start. Is it organic? That has to be the first question. If we don't have our foundation right when it comes to nutrition, we can get lost in a sea of just other emotional decisions. So when it comes to the food, the nutrients that we're going to try to put into our body, number one is, is organic. And I'll say this maybe like 12 times tonight. If it's not organic, you are putting a chemical in your body. You are downregulating the system. You are making your body work harder. So if it is not organic, it wasn't designed for the human being. And we have to allow ourselves to get back as a foundation, not as a weirdo thing, not as a group of people who like to eat healthy and you know grow grass or something, but really as we're just trying to be awesome human beings and we want to level up our health. So number one, is the product organic? And I have, I'm gonna share, I'm gonna share my screen in just a moment here to show you some of the ingredients. And so the first answer for both of them, absolutely positively not, neither one of those are organic. So that's that's kind of square one here. So that's that's real important to understand. Square two is then, man, is it a GMO product? Folks, listen, maybe you can't get organic, but you gotta make sure you're you're getting a non-GMO product. And both of these fail on that as well. And what does that really mean? They're heavy in glyphosate. Glyphosate, Karen, we've talked about it on the show before. Glyphosate is, um, you we're familiar with, it's called Roundup. It's in Roundup. That's the stuff we spray on our lawns to kill things. That it is loaded with glyphosate. It means we're putting it directly into our bodies. And I get the position. And this is, so I'm not, this one I don't care so much about, about really talking about exactly what it is and how it got positioned. They position themselves as that's the bad guy. So therefore we must be the good guy. And it, every time the conversation got, gets turned, we'll be like, well, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not me is, the, is their answer. It's not, well, we're not, you know, you know, using up the earth's resources and all these other things, the carbon footprints and all that. But the, the reality is they are. They are putting by, if we all consume, consume these impossible burgers, if we all consume these, these um, beyond burgers, we would be contributing to putting more glyphosate in our soil. And there's nothing more poisonous than that. That's, that's one of the biggest threats, quite frankly, to this earth right now is how much glyphosate we're using. So let me... Um, yeah, and GMO foods, I mean, that, that's one of the things they're modifying for, right? So that, that it, so that the plants can take more glyphosate. GMO foods tend to have higher concentrations of pesticides and right uh, than foods. 
Yeah, absolutely. That is the whole thing that they have more of these, these GMO foods, these genetically modified organisms have more of these different things, these pesticides, herbicides, and things like glyphosate in them. So they literally are coming with chemicals so they can survive in their environment better. So the bugs and stuff like that don't eat them. So Karen, I want to share my screen. I, I hopefully, um, I'm not super committed to this, but I'm going to see if I can get this to work here. Uh, oh, and maybe not because my mouse decided to just die here. So, um, Oh, wait a minute. Here we go. All right. Let's see if this works. All right. You let me know. Can you guys see that? Or Karen, can yeah, you see? Yeah, we've got it. Yeah. So this is the ingredients list in a Impossible Burger. So I want to go back to the fun, the foundations of, of, you know, what you, me, you, and this tribe have talked about all the time, that we want to go from God's garden, right? So if it's good for earth, it'd be good for God's garden. Right. And it would come from God's garden. That's really what we're talking about when we're talking about sustainability. Does it grow in God's garden? Does it come from God's garden? Can it eat out of God's garden? All of those things should apply. Then we want to make sure that, hey, listen, is it is it something that if we do break it up a little bit, is it still good for us? Is it organic, et cetera? So let's go through the this happens to be the impossible burger. Um, and you could probably see one of the first things highlighted there is the uh, is the soy protein concentrate. Real quickly here, and because this is, this is probably a topic we got to cover anyways, but soy by itself is a massive no-no. Soy is considered an anti-nutrient. If people just took away this from the show tonight, this is a win. Then this is massive, folks, because oftentimes people get away from meat products and the most popular product out there, especially protein product, is soy. And unfortunately, we really consider soy is an anti-nutrient. It has something called phytic acid in it, which means that it binds nutrients and get, takes them away. It's, it's, it's super not good for the body. And it has what we call an estrogenic effect, meaning it raises estrogen, the bad kind that leads to things like cancer, especially like breast cancer. So we want to avoid all soy products, period, especially if they're GMO. And in our country, we're probably at 95 99.5% of all soy products are going to be GMO. So we just, say, is there any non-GMO soy in, in the U S today? Like uh, there, there are, there are some small farms that do have it. And when it's non-GMO and it's an organic product, there are some benefits to soy, no doubt about it, but unfortunately we're just, we don't get to see them. Yeah. So when we look at something like this, it's soy protein concentrate. And it's got some other things, you know, these are key words, right? We see this all the time, coconut oil, the sunflower oil, okay, natural flavors, potato protein, GMO product. So soy, corn, pro potato, those are the top GMO products in our country. We see a, a potato protein, we see soy, legal homoglobin, I, I know I'm beating that up, but it's another soy product, and then a soy protein isolate. I, I, I won't cover it right now, but the concentrate and the isolate, it's important to understand the differences there. And we'll cover that in just a little bit. And then you see all the other, these right here, it looks pretty cool. A lot of these are vitamins, right? But they're all synthetic vitamins added to the product because there's nothing natural there. So yeah. what happens, these are all void of, pro, of, of nutrients. So when they do the nutrient profile, they got to put back in some B vitamins. So that's why you see ascorbic acid here. They see vitamin B1, vitamin B6, vitamin B2, vitamin B12. Got to add all those back in because they're synthetic. So, so these are, you know, that one, what was that in the Impossible Burger? I think I have one here for the, um, for the other guy as well here, the Beyond Burger. Uh, here we go. Give me another second here. And so as you said, the companies that are creating this may have, you know, they've only focused on the environmental impact or, well, as you said, there's not, you know, there's that whole other environmental impact, but they're, they're focusing on one, one side, but really end of the day, these are just not good things to be putting in your body. Yeah. So we, we really have to look at, when we look at nutrition, um, Karen, and, I, and that's such a great, um, I think you guys can see this now. We have yeah. to think decide what are we analyzing a product or a food by is it good for a human or is it good for the earth and then is it good for the earth just because it's something different or is it really good for the earth if some argument to me right now says that hey we can't can we can't i think this is a topic that we should cover tonight as well 
we can't continue to eat the amount of meats that we're, we're eating in our country because of the, the impact that cattle is having, et cetera. Okay, that's one conversation. But what's the other conversation? If you, the other conversation is to be producing massive mar farms of glyphosate and farms of things like soy and corn that have glyphosate and all these pesticides, you're just damaging the earth in a different way, unrepairable. If we at least slow down the meat production, it's repairable. This is not. That's, and that's, that's the big challenge with it. All right, so let's take a look at this Beyond Burger real quick. So we got a, pre, uh, a pea protein and some of the times the ingredients we can't really figure out, even from the manufacturers, we can't get like exactly what's in them. So there's a little asterisk next to here, whether this is a concentrate, an isolate, or more than likely another GMO product. Expeller press canola oil. And we'll touch on this tonight, but hey, listen, canola oil, this is in that vegetable oil category. This is just a big no-no. Refined coconut oil, we don't necessarily want it refined. Natural flavors, once again, potato starch. So this is almost a mimic. The big difference here is that one uses soy protein, one used a pea protein. If I had to pick just, just on a table, which one I would say to eat, pea protein or soy protein, no doubt about it, I'd say pea protein challenge this one is its third ingredient is canola oil so like this is this is not good for the human body this is one of those fats that like once it's in the body very very difficult to get out creates a lot of stress on the liver creates a lot of stress on the cells because once it gets bound up into that the, the, the lipid the lipid layer where vitamins a d e and k are supposed to be once it binds into there very difficult for your body to start to separate that. So when we eat a lot of canola oil, even though they don't really count much in the caloric intake, but by eating these foods, we can start to just pack it on because it's very difficult for us to get rid of this stuff. All right. And before we go off this list, natural flavors, aren't they natural? They don't have to be. That's, that's the bummer. So natural flavors is a, a, an elusive um, term that's used in the food industry. And I'm like this with that term, and I, and I explain why. So natural flavors and natural recipes and things like that, natural fragrances even, it gives the purveyors, the, you know, the geniuses behind it all, and, and the people who come up with these amazing formulas to create certain flavors and foods, it gives them the luxury of not giving up their secret formula. But at the same time, it lets other people hide their secret formula. So I have a mixed emotion with it. So when I see natural flavors, I want to know the company in the industry that I'm working with. So if I see a company that's, you know, time tested and I truly trust them because I've done the research on them and it says natural flavors, then I extend that trust. But if I don't know that company, you know what I mean? So if a company's doing everything organic, gluten-free, you know, and all that stuff, they're not going to blow their MO by just all of a sudden, you know, you know, trying to chintz out on natural flavors. But unfortunately, most things that are called natural flavors can be any flavor out there. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right. So that's, that's my start of the, 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 just in general, are these impossible burgers? Are these uh, beyond burgers healthy? The answer is no, it's little hickory trickery. And I don't even know that it's a better option because when our option, it's not like a step up, not by any means. They just create a whole different sequence of events that, you know, that are not going to be good for the body. So whenever we're going to say, what's the best option first, is it organic? Is it non GMO? You know, is it a whole food source? And let's always go back to that. And then, then if the answer is no, 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 then we just leave them both off the table. Yeah, well, that's the thing. We actually don't need necessarily another option. If a conventional meat burger is, is not good for the environment, not um, healthy for us, it doesn't mean that we need a, a Beyond Burger version. We could just eat a totally different food or we could go make ourselves something or go somewhere that does have a good option for us. You know, interesting enough, I was having this conversation with my staff today. And we were yeah. talking about, like, we were talking about these guys and it was, you know, like, it's, it literally is like, it just tricks us like, oh my goodness. And then we hear there's other people right now and some celebrities and some dude who has a lot of money saying like, we should, you know, like never eat meat again. I don't know, just all this stuff. And it, it just confuses the whole thing when it's not about health, when it's not about aligning with what, you know, the power that made the body heals the body, we can get really distracted really, really fast. And so either it's good for the human body or it's not. So we were talking about meat in general, because I got my staff asked me, well, is meat sustainable? And I said, at the rate we're eating it? No, it's not. And people eat 
too much. Like you actually probably don't need to have meat three times a day necessarily. Like that's like not, people have, and they have conventional processed gross meat that where the cows are kept in those horrible little chicken coop cow things. Is that sustainable? No, but that doesn't have to be what meat looks like. No, okay. And you hit it right on the head. The, the bigger, the, one of the bigger challenges that we have, in, at least in our country, and you probably have the same thing, that we have been conditioned that there's supposed to be an animal protein with every meal. And <laughs> there's literally not. Like we don't need that much. So my advice was here to these two, to the young, two young girls working with me today was that, listen, when you crave something, most women will crave some type of red meat about once a month, eat it once a month, but yeah. do eat it every day. Your body can't, it can't break it down. It can't sustain it. So if we got healthier and here is the answer to this. So this, this, and this sounds like the same issue that we dealt with these last 12 months with COVID. We never talked about getting healthier. If we want to fix the world's issues with too much beef or too much GMOs, if we get healthier, one, we need much less food, period. Yeah. Yeah. We, are, we got healthier guts. And I know, listen, I know there's like big picture stuff, but in, on an individual basis, this is what we can all do. So, you know, I'm bringing a whole group of people right now through some fasting and they're discovering, wow, they're eating much less food, but have just as much energy. I said, yes, because you're more efficient. And the better your body gets at taking in nutrients, you don't need as much. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, when people ask me how much protein do I eat a day, I, say, I, have, I have no idea, but I tell you what, it's not much, not much animal protein. At yeah. best, I probably do a half serving a day. And some days I do a full serving. And, you know, and, and my body still performs and works as good or better than it ever has. When I used to eat, you know, two chicken breasts for lunch and steak or a burger at dinner. And I had eggs every single morning. So that concept, if we get health educated, it's probably more important than anything. And what I always find Karen, you know, and we've talked about this a bunch that the more people move into eating real foods, vegetables, you know, broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, kale, like all those good things, they feel full, they get satiated, they're eating good fats. They don't even want that much meat. And it's again, there's nothing wrong with meat. We're just over consuming it. Yeah, I think, yeah, uh, here in Australia as well, we just, we, we massively over consume it. We over consume it and it's, and it's not high quality. All right, should we go to the next one? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, um, let's, uh, let's, okay, we're kind of talking about burgers. So let's kind of keep talking about different um, places to eat out. Uh, what about Chick-fil-A? That's one that, that people kind of think is a bit of a healthier option if they are going to go take out. Yeah. So this is, this is, this is actually very common. And I think a lot of people, a lot of people know that this is still in the fast food category, but you'd be surprised. I have a lot of people in my clinic who will say things like, well, I, I did pretty good this weekend. Um, I stayed away from fast food. I just went to Chick-fil-A and we think we've always been, again, it's conditioning about meat is what it is. It's we think that as long as it's not a burger, if I choose any alternative, then I've probably done a good thing. So this one I needed to speak to because I get this a lot and I have a healthy tribe. Like there are people that, you know, that come through my office and come through our clinic and then I consult with, they're healthy people. Yet I'm shocked at how many people still visit Chick-fil-A. Now, that being said, I must admit a couple of things. One, I absolutely love Chick-fil-A. Absolutely. That to me, like it's amazing. <laughs> Simply amazing. The chicken sandwich, I'll <laughs> to describe to you and show you all the ingredients in it. It is amazing, but there's reasons for it. They have some of the best, highest paid scientists in the world that know exactly how our, test, our taste buds work. They know what we like, they know the vinyl of what we need in order for us to want it when we drive by to be triggered by the red and white. They know the smells to make sure that they're pumping it out into the parking lots. All of that is a science, a literally a science, a marketing science on how to get us to consume more. So with that being said, so that's my disclaimer. Um, I can't also can't remember the last time I had it, but every weekend when I go by Home Depot and the Chick-fil-A is out in the parking lot, I'm always thinking to myself, I wonder if my wife would notice if I was gone for 10 minutes. If I like, I don't do it, but I, it's always in the back of my mind. All right, so let me let me um, let me share my screen again. I'm going to see if I can hunt down. I had this 
really cool thing. And I want to um, also, for those of you out there that are not familiar, I have no affiliation with, so this, I'm going to bring up a, um, a list of all this food. And it comes from uh, this person called the food babe. And she's awesome. I don't know her, but I've been following her for years. So if you guys don't follow the food babe, she does an amazing job. She's an advocate of health. She's an advocate, advocate of good food. So, um, and she's really pushed the needle in making our choices. I, I remember one thing specifically that she did years ago that she really pushed one of the almond milk companies to get rid of some products, some, some, um, yeah, I remember. Uh, ingredients carrot yeah. carrot that was in one of the products called silk and it was through her tribe and the company listened so when we put our money where our mouth is folks it works so we kind of keep that in mind all right so i want to share my screen again i'm going to go right here and this comes directly from one of her web pages or uh, can you guys see the karen can you see that so that amazing amazing sandwich i'm talking i should stop describing it that way um yeah, okay. I get what I get. What we don't, yeah, we don't have Chick Fil A, guys. Sounds like luckily, um, yeah. but yeah, that's a that's a pretty good. That's a pretty long, uh, long yeah. list. Of I want to go through to really kind of help everyone understand what's really taking place here and how this has been really become an, an art and a science of how to make us eat food. So first of all, um, we'll look right here. One of the first ingredients in the act in the chicken itself is MSG. And MSG is monosodium glutamate. And really its biggest knock against humans is that it's addictive. You'll see this in soy sauces, et cetera. So think addiction when you see MSG. I can't just eat one, think that, right? And then of course in the chicken, in the chicken is sugar. Interesting. Now we get to the chicken coating. There's our gluten, wheat flour. We have more sugar. We have more MSG, baking soda, sodium, aluminum, uh, blah, 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 soybean oil, toxic, fully refined peanut oil, very toxic. And that's just in the chicken. Over 55 ingredients in this product, by the way, 55. So remember my rule when it comes to, you know, being organic and everything, organic, you know, God's garden means it has one ingredient. So now we'll go to the bun itself. Here's some more gluten with enriched. Enriched means that it's been bleached out and colored. So we got colored gluten, some more sugar, soybean oil again, dangerous to the body, more wheat gluten, more wheat gluten. And here's the interesting thing, Karen. Do you think anyone thinks about gluten when they're eating a chicken sandwich? <laughs> right? Probably not, but if it's coated like this, they sure should be. Yes. Um, then we stroll all the way down here, some more soy. And then I'm going to go over to, so the bun oil, th this is just, this is kind of brutal. Soybean oil, palm kernel oil, soy lecithin. There's that natural flavor, which in this scenario, I am not trusting it. Now, listen, how could you mess up a pickle, right? Start uh, that that's even yeah there is like that many ingredients in a pickle Noel also writes in the comments here that my kids are going to kill me <laughs> we're going to make some people unhappy with this one so listen if in, in 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 speaking of your kids you feed them something like this and it's on you that they misbehave the rest of the day they're can i handle it so that we didn't get to the worst part for the children's brains here so we start off the pickles, cucumbers, yes, water, yes, vinegar, yes, salt, cool. I'm good. If that line got drawn right here, I'd be cool with it. But we get down to these bottom four and talk about brain fryers, natural flavors, polysorbate 80, yellow five, known brain carcinogen, oh. blue one. Yeah, so there's stuff. There's like, just look at this. There's a lot of stuff in here. And there's a, lot of, a bunch of other stuff we don't know. Nothing organic, nothing claiming that it's non-GMO and probably some of the worst kept chickens, you know, uh, period. So with all that being said, Chick-fil-A, my friends, is not a good alternative. Yeah. And inevitably, and this happened the other day in my office when I kind of went through some of this. All right. Then they said, all right, so then what should I choose? Chick-fil-A or the Beyond Burger? No is the answer. No, 
making the best of two bad choices doesn't mean that it's going to be good. That's where, you know, we have a little education, we drive down the road, we maybe make it to, you know, someplace else, we make it home, make it to the grocery store, you know, and a, a quote that my wife always reminds me of, especially when it comes to our dogs. So, you know, my, my wife makes our dog food and, and it's not convenient. But we, we talk about this all the time, and especially in dog food as well as human food. Convenience kills vitality. Yeah. Yeah. And, and listen, I, I had some in today, and we were trying to, I was talking about them, just get, I had to give them a parasite protocol. Listen, there's no such thing as one pill that gets rid of your parasites. It doesn't work that way because they lay eggs, and you got to go after the eggs, and you have to have like a little extended protocol. If you just want it convenient, you're going to kill your vitality. So when it comes to building health, we have to allow ourselves to get used to the fact that we got to participate in making good food decisions and then maybe even participate in making food because convenience kills vitality. I love that. I think that's a good one. Okay, we've got a um should we take a quick we've got a um a food question in the chat here. What about Ezekiel bread? Is that okay to eat on an occasional basis? It is. It is. This is a good price. So Let's just do this. Let's just say, imagine every time someone asks me the question, really the very first thing they have to ask, is it organic? That's where is we it? have to start. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know that. So my, a little disclaimer here too, if I didn't say this already, I'm not like a food company yeah. expert. I'm not. Like I, I, and I'm gonna explain to you why I'm not because I'm quite lazy when it comes to food in this category. I don't want to learn all those different, like you see that, that thing that was on the, those 55 ingredients? I don't wanna yeah. do that. Yeah. So I just like, for me, when I say I'm lazy about it, I would much rather know that it's organic. It comes from God's garden, has one ingredient and I'll eat it. Yeah. I don't want to, it, it could, and I think a lot of our folks don't understand this too. Like you can be, you can make a grocery store trip, a three hour trip. You're checking every label every time. So, and I've been there and I've done a ton of that research and I've spent more time and I've spent, I have bought no less than probably 500 different types of protein bars. I buy them, I, I analyze them, I bring them home, sit on the computer, I eat them, I get a bellyache or whatever it may be. Yeah. But I'll, I'll, go, I'll go to the store and grab every one because I don't want to sit in the grocery store. I'll buy them all and go home and I'm just always praying that, man, maybe someone's going to knock this out of the park. Um, I've, yet, I've yet to find that bar. But nonetheless, that's where I'm, when I say I'm a little bit lazy when it comes to analyzing foods i really just take the shortcut is it organic it comes from god's garden is it non-gmo is it soy free is it you know is it gluten free if it is i'll eat it yeah 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 has it got a real food ingredient list i mean obviously if it's just a real food that's that's better if we are talking about i think because i think ezekiel bread doesn't have too many ingredients does it i'm not i'm not sure but there are some good products out there i remember the last time i looked at ezekiel bread um I remember it being a pretty good product. Like it was all, it, they were all natural. They weren't processed. I don't know if or what type of oil there is out there. Speaking of bread, just real quickly here. One of the trick, tricky things out there, and I, I'm not going to say that it's intentionally tricky, but one of the things we have to watch out for is um, organic bread. Okay. Okay. So, you know, we have this, our new cafe or, or organic cafe called Prima. And we opened it up like eight, nine months ago. And one of the products that we want to we want to offer and our, our audience would love to have it is um, avocado toast. Yeah, it's toast. a favorite. Yes, it's everyone's favorite. Unless it'd be great for business. You know why we don't have it yet? We can't find a piece of bread that passes our standards. Ah. So we have in our, in our cafe, we have the standard of 100% organic, 100% non-GMO, no canola oil or vegetable oils, period, and no soy. So that's our standard across the board, which means that I can't find a bread that's organic and doesn't have a vegetable oil. And that's our struggle right now. Um, and yes, we have found some like out in California that we can only get like X amount of loaves at a time. So, so when we look and so people will bring up how about different brands, there's a very popular organic brand called, um, I think it's Dave's and it's an organic bread, but it is full of gluten. So we're hundred percent gluten-free. I don't know if I put that in there. So it's hundred percent organic, non-GMO, gluten-free, canola oil-free, soy-free, whole restaurant. Yet I have, we haven't had, we, ha we haven't had any luck finding a good bread that is organic 
gluten free and vegetable oil free. That means palm oil. That means um, corn oil. All those guys that fall into that category. So it's, it's more diff difficult than we think. So when people start asking me about breads, I get asked the question all the time. Well, I bought it gluten free bread because I definitely am a you know pro you know promote do gluten free whenever you can. But all of a sudden they get a bread that now is full of canola oil, et cetera, et cetera. So we really, really got to kind of open our eyes. And why again, those canola oils? Because once we get those oils in our body, very, very difficult to get them out. Well, let's talk about oils then. What are the oils um, we should avoid? Because I mean, we've talked, you've, you've mentioned canola oil, you've mentioned vegetable oils. Um, a lot of people see vegetable oil and think that's a healthy option. I know, I know. I know. And it's, and that's one of the things like, is this healthy, not option, healthy or not uh, healthy. And the vegetable oil is not healthy and it's because it's processed. So what falls into that category? Things like um, that's canola oil, that's soybean oil, that's grape seed oil. All of those are in that category of vegetable oil and they're all no good. Sunflower, safflower, no good. They're all processed. And that's the challenge, Karen, that it's the way that they process these oils. Uh, they're all, almost all of them are GMO products. And therefore, once they get into our, into the human body, the body has a very, very, very difficult time getting rid of them. So I have people that eat phenomenal. They don't drink alcohol and they, and they develop something that's called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. This is a canola oil issue. That's what it is. And I, I try to explain that to people and they're thin, but and I, make sure I do their labs and they have what we call non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And this is bad fats. That's exactly what it is. And they run all day long and they exercise and they do their Peloton. And you have a hard time burning that off because it gets stuck in the visceral fat. So, so being literally a, like a sharpshooter when it comes to, you know, paying attention to your oils super, super, super important. And when my wife and her crew was putting together like all the menus and all the, the you know, the food options in our restaurant, man, we spent literally months and literally, I actually didn't mind this for a moment. It was painful, but we kept getting samples and it's like we'd buy all loaves from all over the place, all these bread sources. We try them, but the truth is, you'd know, like you would like, you know, when you get your body clean, you put bad food into it, it don't feel good. Like you get that food hangover, you get that headache or whatever it may be, a little brain fog. So those are the guys that we want to watch out for. Um, anything, you know, even cotton seed oil falls into that category. So we just want to watch it. So the good oils, I guess a good, uh, a, a, um, a good, you know, piece to add with that. What are the, what are the good oils? Avocado oil, olive oil. Those are like the good guys. Those are the ones that we want to be looking for when we have products, especially in that category. Okay. Um, yeah. So Roxanne said, is olive oil the only one we can eat? Um, and how about sesame and walnut oil? Again, we put it to the standard, right? Because a sesame, it's going to come from a sesame seed. We want to make sure that, that sesame seed is organic. And then we also okay. want to make sure that the walnuts are coming from an organic source. And both of those can be fine. The most important thing is you understand how they're processed. So yeah. that's, that's a big thing. So there is a little bit of this gray area when it comes to organic foods and with the organic foods it's you can a lot of companies can get away with for example there's um organic doritos right now uh -huh. no way yeah I haven't done that. <laughs> yeah and i scratched my head and i was wondering man how do they do this how do they do this and if organic processed they have organic foods that they're sliding through in the way that they process them to make those foods. So we still have to be smart. We still like, like if you don't know, the answer is always no. So that's where you want to know your manufacturers a little bit better. And there's some really good ones out there. The, list, the beauty is because people listen to where the money's put, there are more and more pro companies and products showing up that are producing, you know, super, you know, super good products and super healthy for people like you and I and people that are listening to this tonight who want, they're going to go that extra mile. They want those foods. It's just a matter of how do we, how do we find them? And then we got, we got to look is the, is the answer. Yeah. Okay. And what about, should our olive oil be cold pressed? Uh, Kim asks. 
Um, cold press would be fantastic, but again, with the olive oil, as long as it's an organic source, um, and it is important that it, it is an or, you know, organic source, and that's what your first target needs to be, is that it's organic. If it can be cold pressed, it'd be great as well. Okay. Speaking of cold pressed, <laughs> yeah. let's, let's just switch real quickly here, because um, I get this, this question all the time. So obviously, you and I have talked about, I know I'm jumping all over the place here. Yeah. Uh, so. Good. We've talked a lot about about um, celery juice here, and yeah. you know we, we have a new cafe and, and we obviously produce a lot of juices. And I think we, uh, Karen, did we talk about HPP before? High pressure processing that they're doing to the juices uh, now. Yes, we did. We did. Um, I, I wish this is like something I wish I didn't even have to report on. So if you go to the grocery store now, you can go in and they know that cold press juicing is the name of the game. Like that is how you get the most value out of the juice itself. And it oxidizes less, so you don't get the sugar turnover as much. All of those good things about cold press juicing. So again, in our cafe, 100% organic ju uh, product. All we do is cold press juicing. So, so our, it has a, a great stable shelf life and it's you know super good product. The challenge is now some of the bigger companies have figured it out, but they're putting their product through something called HPP. So if you guys go to the grocery store, you have to look on your bottles now. If it says HPP, that's a high pressure processing, and it basically neutralizes the enzymes. Well, folks, that is why we drink juices, FYI. That is the only reason you drink a juice is for the enzymes in the juice. Otherwise, there's no reason. You, you, you get rid of the fiber. So we are drinking juices to get enzymes and HPP neutralizes the enzymes, make them unavailable. And I get that it's, it's keeping it so you can't build, you know, they can't grow bacteria, but ultimately they're just sustaining shelf life. So again, buyer beware, right? Is that they say buyer beware? Yeah. yeah. So we be mindful and again, just be really understand if there's a celery juice sitting on the, on the shelf and it says that it's, you know, it's ex expiration date is seven weeks from today. You yeah. know, better than that, you know, better than that. So again, well, is it better than nothing? I don't know if you got six bucks to toss out the window, that's kind of what you're doing. Because again, the reason you drink juices is because of the enzymes. So, so that's, that's, that's another popular thing that shows up. And I know getting like juicing is not super convenient. I, I get that. It's kind of messy unless you own your own place and then it's super convenient. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. I love it. Well, if we're talking about drinks, what about some other healthy drinks like diet sodas, diet Coke? Talk to me about that. I was, I was a big, we were talking before, I had a big Diet Coke addiction through college. I was a, I was a big fan. Haven't touched the stuff in a long time, but it was really hard to give up, get super addictive. Yeah. Yeah. Super addictive and not just the sugar, but all the other chemicals that are in there. So, you know, I, I again, I, I often think that man, nobody thinks that Diet Coke is a, is, is good for us. The challenge is Karen. And I, you know, we spoke to this just a little bit and I'm sure some of our listeners here, Man, there's some other health people out there saying, yeah, you can drink Diet Coke here, here and there, you know, for like pre-workout and get yourself bumped up a little But Man, no, no, no. Bad advice. Bad. It's not even health advice. That is not putting your health first. That's deciding that you want to burn a couple more calories when you're exercising um, or whatever it may be. There's no benefit to drinking Coke. There is, it, the whole thing is chemicals, all of it. So it doesn't pass our organic test. It does not pass our enzyme test. It doesn't pass our shelf life test. It is massively with sugars and chemicals, 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 chemicals that are very, very, very addictive to the brain itself. So, well, the brain becomes addicted to those chemicals. Karen, you're not the only one. Uh, my lovely wife, when, I, when we first met, she was sponsored by Diet Coke. Oh. <laughs> when she she was playing over, um, uh, she, she, you know, she's a, She's an Olympic field hockey player for the U.S., but she was, when during one of the off years, she was living in Australia, wow. and she was there, she was playing for, I think it was like a pro team over there, and sponsored by Diet Coke. She yeah. drink all the time, and listen, just not good for the body, not good for the brain, not good for the bones, not metabolically, nothing about it. So it is not a good alternative to anything. Yeah, to anything. So it's just one of those, no, just don't put it in your bodies. Yeah, yeah. don't put it in your bodies. 
kid's body. Don't let them put their, you know, I, had a, I had a young guy today who said, oh, I just do one diet Coke a day. Oh. I had, and I thought about that. I was like, huh, I don't even know what analogy I can use right now, but I had to give him my boxing one. So I said, you know, what if I just punch you in the face one time a day? You know, like it's equivalent because it's damaging the body. And that, that was my analogy. And uh, I think it passed right by him, but really it's just, it's damaging the body. And we, yeah. you know, and I think most of the people that are here, you know, with us on Zoom and a lot of people that are watching us on Facebook, you know, we're building this, this continuous respect and love for our bodies and, and this pride and this desire to just continue to level up so we can, you know, live the best lives and be the best versions of ourselves. So my guess is not a lot of people uh, that are listening tonight that are, you know, drinking Diet Coke. And if you are, you know, maybe this is the one of the ones that you scratch this year. Yeah. What about artificial sweeteners in general then? Are there any, or, or sweeteners? Are there any good sweeteners that we can use? We've got one from Sam here that says, how about organic stevia as a sweetener in smoothies and bulletproof coffee, et cetera? Yeah, so, so I would go with all the artificial sweeteners just, just for the most part, scratch them. And then we have some of the natural ones like stevia, um, you know, and maybe like a dates or something like that. So here's, here's what I would say with those. I, I know they use them a lot, but I will tell you clinically, I try to lean people away from using specifically stevia. If you're going to use stevia, it needs to be organic. So here we go again, and it needs to be whole leaf. So it's not processed. There's a lot of stevia on the market that is not good. It's highly processed and it's not whole leaf and it's not organic. The reason generally, and just in, just in general, I try to lean a little bit away from sweeteners is because if you rely on sweetness, you rely on sweetness. You won't enjoy anything without that sweetener. So some t- at some point in time, you're not going to have available to you organic whole leaf stevia. So you're going to end up making a bad decision. I promise you, when you start eating a really like robust, you know, a different array of vegetables and fruits and, you know, meats and, and, and vegetables and all the different things, your taste buds explode. It's incredible. And you will want less sweet, sweet, sweet. One of the ways to need less sweet is to eat more bitters. Yeah. So one of the ways that I can find out what people like or how much they're addicted to sugars, I just ask them, do you love arugula? Do you like ginger? And if they're like, yeah, I don't like those kale, yuck. Like, I know that their sugar receptors are dominating their, their bitter receptors. That was one for me. My wife has always loved bitter. She'd always brought in things like, like arugula. I hated it. I disliked it. I love arugula. I hated but, it. Wow. Yeah. It's because Karen, it's like I, was, I was a carb guy, carb junkie all my life. So, you know, even if I was eating healthy carbs, all those carbs were converting real simple, simple sugars. So the bitter receptor was getting literally like it was being annihilated where the sugar receptor was dominating it. So you couldn't even, it couldn't even express itself. So I just kept feeding myself and I really did it by ginger, by you, by taking like shots of ginger. It was pretty hardcore. And that woke up those receptors again. And that's where when you use bitters as digestive enzymes, incredible health attributes you literally can wake up your digestive receptors throughout throughout your body by just taking bitters and if you and if you don't like bitters and you just want to do what i did i just started by taking a shot of ginger a day and it's a game changer eventually you redevelop that taste it'll open up ginger what do you mean like literally a shot of of cold pressed or a fresh pressed ginger like ginger juice or you're just like chopping up the ginger and like eating it yeah. So like you can get like cold pressed ginger, like we, we do in our restaurant, a lot of like, um, you know, like smoothie shops or health food stores, you can get a shot of ginger. Literally. I just drank one. Okay. okay. Yeah. Beauty of it. It literally lights your brain on fire. But so what we've discovered about the bitter receptors in this really sweet and sour receptors, these digestive receptors, you have these little receptors in way more cells than we thought they're all over our body. So the more that we just give bitter foods to the body, the better digester you become. So, you know, that's one of the things like when people, they listen, if you need, like if you're dealing with a case of like um, a UTI, if you're dealing with candida, these are, these are the foods you need to get into your body. You need to get bitters, 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 because these will squash all those guys, wake up your digestive receptors and fight back. So you can develop good pH and good bacteria in your body. 
Nice. Love it. Well, you mentioned sh smoothie shops there. So let's talk about that for a second, because again, there's a lot of different smoothie shops and uh, some of them perhaps aren't as healthy as people think. I know we've got some here. Um, we've got Boost Juice. I think you said you've got Smoothie King, Tropical Smoothie, some ones like that. What about the smoothies there? They're um, serving up. And I promise you, this was not a promo for our place. <laughs> um, because we're oh, gonna... we can promo your place. Let's like, let's promo it. I mean, if you want, I so wish that I had a place that was like 100% organic, gluten-free, GMO-free, vegetable oil-free. Like I don't have one around the corner. So let's, let's promo it. I mean, that's amazing. Imagine if we could get more people opening up cafes like that. Like kudos to you guys. It's amazing. Well, you know, it's interesting you say that when my wife and I first sat down and started talking about this, we, we kind of thought about like, how are we, how, how are we going to go about this? And we said, we're going to do it the right way only. There'll be no substitutes. There'll be no like, well, we get organic when it's available, or this is the best we could do today or whatever. So we have that standard. We drew a line in the sand and then we went after it. And the, the interesting thing was we were looking for a model. We'd never been in the restaurant business before. We were looking for a model of someone else that, you know, has been doing it. We only found one. And it was a friend, it's Kelly's friend. We had her here on the show, Chris Flat. She's out in San Diego at a yeah. place in Danya. That was the only yeah. other place in our country. There might be others that that standard, yeah. that every single thing passed that that litmus test. All right. So what what was your oh smoothie places? Smoothie, smoothie king, tropical smoothie. These places. Uh, you know, we go, we want to go get a smoothie. It's got a bunch of fruit and things in it. Mm -hmm. Are we eating healthy? Yeah. So what's our first question? Is it organic? Yes. So, uh, so they fail that test, but let's just say at least they're doing veggies and stuff like that. Are they non GMO? No. Yeah. I'm going to tell no. you probably not. now, not only is it not organic now, because we're not certified non GMO, we're actually putting chemicals into our body along with these fruits. And I don't even like, and that's just, that's a big problem with it. And, we, and even sustainability. Now we're supporting um, the companies uh, that make glyphosate and these huge, massive companies, some of the biggest ones in our, in our, in the world, quite frankly, that continue to punish our earth and stuff by, by buying their products. But maybe the biggest eye opener, and this is the one I want most of our, my moms and my dads who are swinging by and thinking they're doing a good thing. They go to tropical smoothie cafe or smoothie king you can literally and again i and i i don't really like to do this because i know these are men and women's businesses but i also do want to do it because of the health component part of this if, if you literally just go to their website you can go to tropical smoothie cafe they have all the nutrients there if they have 23 smoothies karen 20 of them have over 100 grams of sugar 100 That's a lot. you, you one, have a lot a lot of them are big too. Like they, they serve those really big um, cups, which is cool, but like it's a lot of sugar. It's a lot of sugar. Uh, 20 or out of yeah. the 20 or 24 had over a hundred grams of sugar. That's not okay. That's a yeah. glass. Like that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's a massive amount. And a lot of them are added sugar. So we really, really got to be mindful about what we're doing. So do, do, do fruits naturally have sugar? Yes, of course they do. And, but there's always usually a balance of fiber. So when you eat an apple, there's enough fiber there that will slow things down and make you so you're not hungry. And then ideally eat fruit, you know, go out in soccer field, play around, go toss a ball, go outside, ride a bike, and you burn off that simple sugar pretty easily. But if we're taking that big old tropical smoothie and it's got 125 grams of sugar in 16, 20 ounce jug, or, you know, uh, glass, and you sit down and you ride in your car and you're sucking it back or you're sitting at your desk doing it, you have nowhere to go, but you go, you skyrocket up, blood sugars go down. And then, then once you go up, your body dumps a ton of insulin into the body. It grabs all those sugars, it stores them in fat cells, and then you crash. And then you got to get, you got to keep the cycle going over and over again. So we really got to be mindful of the products that are out there, but it's still number one question. Is it organic? Number two, are we putting chemicals in the body? Are they GMO free products? Yeah. And what you're saying about eating, I mean, fruit, fruit obviously does have sugar when you eat it, but you, you can't eat as much. Like if we're talking about a pineapple, like how many pineapples can you really sit there and eat? Like nobody actually eats, like, you know, you eat less, like when you're eating the real food, like you don't eat like, 
I don't know, can you sit and eat five apples all in one go? Like that'd be really tough. Like it's it's hard to eat when you're eating the whole fruit. It's hard to overeat. You know, I mean, you can, but it's harder than when you smushed it together in a smoothie, added some, you know, um, frozen ice cream or frozen yogurt or something in there. It's much easier to consume. You know, speaking of that, and I guess we'll talk about my cafe again or our cafe. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we gave that a lot of thought because we didn't want to be promoting a product that would be creating, you know, these blood sugar crashes. So in our formulations, we put, we found other vegetables that were super high in fiber that we could put in our most tasty smoothie. Like we have a smoothie called the Nutter Butter. And you would never think it, but if you look at the ingredients and it freaks some people out, you'll, you'll see certain vegetables in there that you just wouldn't consider. They're like, um, um, I forget what, which ones are in there, but right. But there's, <laughs> we put fiber back in there through other vegetables um, as a result of knowing that some of those fruits can create a blood sugar. So we looked, we, we went through all of them and made sure that there was a certain amount of fiber back in those to balance that blood sugar. And that's, and that's why, you know, you'll have some smoothies and you crash right after zucchini. I don't know why that was drawing a blank there. So we use zucchini in a lot of it. So imagine looking at your, you go to a smoothie place you've never been to before and you see a says, you know, almond butter and avocado and all this cool stuff and you see zucchini. What is that? My smoothie, unbelievable what it does. So Th those are the simple things that balance out those blood sugars when we, instead of just being all fruit, you can put in certain fibers like that. So those are, uh, and that's important where, versus just an all fruit smoothie. Yeah. And I also think that what you're talking about is, is kind of what you said before in that if you, if you get to know a brand and you know that somebody's literally thinking about putting zucchini in the smoothie to level out your blood sugar when you're buying it and eating it, then, you know, you start to trust some of the other things that are on there. And that's not just your cafe, but there are other brands where you, as you said, if you know, they're all organic, they all, they're anti-GMOs, they've got this position, they think about what they're putting in their products, then you can, you can start to trust the other products that they have a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. You're absolutely right there. And that's, and that's the idea. So I give, I give some leeway and latitude to certain companies that I do know their brand and I know their intentions and, um, you know, and I know what they kind of stand for. So that's a, that's a great point. And, and yes, it's, um, if, if they're going to all those measures, the last thing you're going to do is cheat down on a little thing. Yeah. And blow oh, yeah. Yeah. So we got a question talking about drinks from Jessica on Facebook. Do the sparkling ice drinks contain bad ingredients? The, the sparkling ice drinks. I assume maybe, maybe she's thinking of like the sparkling waters. I think so. What about the sparkling waters? Especially like, um, well, one, just normal sparkling water. How about that? Two, when you, they add some natural flavors to their sparkling water. So here's, um, yeah, so it's, again, a little tricky here. So it's about 50-50. Um, so probably about a year and a half ago, there was a new product that came out and it was a sparkling water. My, my wife happens to love carbonated beverages or, you know, like the sparkling. And uh, we navigated all of her favorite ones and we found out they weren't so good. And we thought they were good, probably in, you know, sometimes I think that we all do this. We like, we don't really closely look because we really don't want to know. Wanna know. <laughs> yeah. So we did a little deeper dive and really did analysis of everything out there. And we did find one or two products that were super, super clean. They were using um, real fruit, real fruit, fruit as their flavoring. And you can use lemon, you can use lime, it's sustainable, it doesn't oxidize that much. So it's, it's capable of doing it now um, and even ascorbic acid and some oranges will do that so that's what some of the companies did that they put ascorbic acid to then stabilize like the lemon and lime but some of the other ones as major brands that we thought were fantastic were not so much yeah in fact they were pretty bad yeah, yeah. okay cool um well we've got uh, uh we've got another question here how about black rice aka forbidden rice is that a good option yeah, so the, it is. It is a good option here. So, um, you know, in fact, yeah, it is. It, it is a good option. So, number one question, right? We want to go to organic. We want to make sure that's organic. So, if you get an organic black rice, it's a, it's a, it's a great option. Can I back up a little bit and go? Um, unless you were going to ask me shortly about proteins. 
Oh, we've got we've got a, a few. We've got a couple of questions here, but yeah, let's let's talk about proteins quickly because you kind of mentioned protein bars and protein powders. Have we got some like quick rules for people to sure. think sure. about when you're looking at real, protein powders? Real quickly, I want to talk about whey protein specifically. Okay. Okay. So first of all, whey does come from milk, from cow's milk. It's a dairy product. Most of the time, people that have dairy issues will have absolutely no problem with whey um, because it is part of the fat and protein that's taken off. So really, when you have milk, there's two proteins that are, that are available. It's one called casein, and that's about 80% of the protein that comes from milk. And then the other part is, is whey protein. We do not want the casein. So we just kind of scratch that, but you can get the whey protein. Now, then whey, once you out on the marketplace, there's two ways that you can get whey. They can get whey protein concentrate or whey protein isolate. Okay. So both of them, the whey protein concentrate, here's the quick answer. If you're going to do whey protein, one has to pass the organic test, right? We want an organic source. And then we want it to be a concentrate, not an isolate. Let me explain to you why. Because so protein, even in this scenario, remember it's a milk product. So it comes with a fat, a protein, and a carbohydrate naturally. This is the way that it's designed in nature. So again, we want to get things as close to God's garden as possible. What happens in the isolate is that they process that one extra level. They pull the fat out, pull the carbohydrate out, and it's all the protein, but it's what we considered denatured. Mm -hmm. And in the bodybuilding world, they would say, oh, this jug is white protein isolate. And every scoop has 30 grams of protein. And you do the same thing over here, and it's only 20 grams. So everyone moved toward isolate thinking, oh, this must be better. But it was actually a lot more difficult to digest because it was denatured. Oh. So it was a processed protein. So a lot of whey products out there, people have difficult time. It'll blow their bellies up. It creates inflammation. And it's not necessarily that whey is a bad product. It is how it's processed. So again, whey process, concentrate, awesome. Now it's really important where this shows up big time is in power bars in protein bars. Almost always it's going to be an isolate because the percentage is higher. They need less isolate to put in the protein bar because the protein bar is only this big. So they physically can put less powder in there and get a higher grams, you know, per gram protein in there. And we got to look at that because that's not a really good protein for us to be consuming. Yeah. Love it. And obviously organic right? For choosing a protein powder. Always pass an organic test first. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Um, okay. Well, we got two more questions here. Should we hit them quickly? Yeah, let's do it. Um, can eating some live probiotic sauerkraut with a meal help with digestion and nutrient assimilation? Asks Tom. Well, Tom, just in general, if you're in, you know, a live organic uh, sauerkraut, awesome. Just, it's just flat out awesome. Will it work as a digestive enzyme in the moment? Not necessarily in phase one, what we call the upper GI, but it will continue to always nurture and, and help your, your good bacteria flourish. So think of sauerkraut a little bit different. And I really like this question because sauerkraut is a builder. Bitters are a breaker down. So okay. you literally can use bitters to help support digestion, like in the moment where things like the sauerkraut are going to be building the system so you can become a better digester overall. Okay. Love it. Um, okay. And then uh, Kim asks us, if I want to food prep a well-balanced salad to last me a few days for dinner, what should it include? I prefer arugula and spinach as a base. And let's, with that question, touch on salad dressings because that's another big one people get confused about. Love arugula as a base. It's become my new favorite. So, uh, and I don't know if that even answers that question, but if you're doing so salad dressing, to your point, this is where we got to pay real close attention. Salad dressing, oddly enough, Karen gets his big pass. The pass is because it's going on salad. So like, it must be good, but man, that's where those bad oils are showing up. Most yeah. of the time you'll have some version of a vegetable oil, canola oil, rapeseed oil, grapeseed oil, something like that. So we got to really pay attention to the oils, the sugar, the MSG that's in there. We really, really, really got to look at that. Go back to what was the question there? Um, so if I want to food prep a well-balanced salad, what should I include? Fiber, fat, and protein. 
every time you look at any meal that you're trying to, to just create balance or just look at it, ask yourself, is there fiber? Arugula, absolutely. Is there a fat? That could be an avocado, nuts, seeds, whatever it may be. Is there a protein? And again, nuts and seeds. So if you have fiber, fat, and protein, you're winning. That's, and that's really all that you need to know. So, and you might go like a goat cheese there. You might go like, or an organic, you know, grass fed cheese. So that's pretty typical. Our, <laughs> here we go again. Our salads at our cafe, we designed them 100% fiber, fat, and protein, every one of them, and that they're probiotic salads. So literally yeah. we are not only feeding the body, we are nurturing the body to get stronger every time we have that salad. So, um, and I love the fact that they're thinking about these strategies. That's like, that's the victory right there. I want to go back to proteins real quickly here, because I think if I'm going to say that the, the proteins, whey protein is a good option if it's a concentrate, but it's not for everybody. Okay. There are really good plant proteins to, to use as well. And you could use pea proteins are good. Hemp proteins are good as well as um, rice, rice proteins. Okay. So brown rice proteins. Those three are the least allergenic of them, and they still have a good amino acid profile. And again, they still got to pass the organic test and organic and non-GMO. And should people try some different ones or stick to the same one? Like if you're putting it in your smoothie every day, do you alternate? Yeah, I, that, that's what I encourage always. We want diet variation. So if you typically get something and maybe it's your pea protein, maybe you can try to get it in a hemp protein, or maybe you try using a whey protein and rotate them. There's, we really don't want to have the same foods over and over and over again. Uh, I'm a little guilty of that because I like what I like. And if it's working, it's working. Uh, yet it is a smaller, you know, the more diet variation that we have, and especially with our proteins, the better off. Because you might find that your body just absorbs. And it would be hard to really tell but you might just absorb other proteins better. Yeah, awesome. Okay, cool. Well, look, I mean, there's a bunch of other foods we could have covered. We're, we're out of time. But I think really, I mean, you've, as you've kind of reiterated, when it comes to, you know, if people are unsure about certain foods at the supermarket, just come back to your test. Is it organic? Is it GMO? Uh, does it have these um, vegetables we don't want in it? Um, you know, and that's a really good start to being to, to, to see if it's a good food to put in your body. Yeah, 100%. And that's, you know, so just, it always just starts with organic. And if we get ourselves trained to do that, and the beauty too is that we will start to influence the purveyors, the other restaurants, the other food suppliers. And if you ask all the time, um, be willing to be that person to ask because people are listening. People want to know what the consumers want. So that's, that's, that's what's awesome about it. So it's got to be organic. We want to go non-GMO. We want no canola oil in it, no soy products, et cetera. So that's, that's a great starting point right there. Okay, awesome. Well, let's move into our last question. Out of all this, what is one action our listeners can take today to move them towards their goal of becoming superhuman? One action. I'm, I'm going to say this. I don't even know it's an action, but think of it this way. To get well, you have to clean the cell. So whatever, however, you can continue to get cleaner and cleaner cells, put that part of your strategy and ask yourself when next time you put something in your body, does this make my cell cleaner yeah. or am I going to have to work harder on my breaking down or my poisoning my body right now so to get well you got to clean the cell love it awesome cool well uh look uh Kim says look forward to this show each week thank you so much I really enjoy learning something new each week Kim we really uh love that you show up every week we love all of you for showing up every week so thanks so much for tuning in guys we'll be back same time next week for another episode and again, appreciate you all. Keep doing your thing, your thing. Keep sharing us out. Keep spreading the love. You never know who you're going to impact by just sharing one little health tip or whatever it may be. So, and of course, keep doing your thing. Take deliberate action every day for your mind, your body, your overall wellness. You all be awesome.